an easy peasy question find the product of the following reaction we have propene with us right yes so we're going to react propene with the uh, cbrcl3 CBR in the presence of sunlight yes and we're going to see what product do we get so how about you show us the structure for cbrcl3 it looks like a very interesting compound yeah the structure is very simple it is c b r c l c l c l okay nice no so let's try solving the question now yes to solve this question first i would like to discuss the karsh effect in detail all right what is this effect yeah what is it this effect is actually hpr whenever you add hpr in presence of h plus or any alkene alkyl halide say hx you will get a markovnikov product in general okay but karsh has observed that if you add h only hbr in presence of a peroxide say r o o r an anti markovnikov product is obtained okay also he observed that it's obtained only in the case of hpr but not for hf hcl or hi no there is a reason for it now i am going to tell you the reason for that first if you remember our thumb rule which is help yeah. here p is peroxide it gives you a free radical no at first what happens is peroxide undergoes a homolytic cleavage between the two same oxygen atoms you will get ro radical and or and now you have alkene with you which is suppose say it as uh, ch3 ch double bond ch2 okay also you have hpr here and this or radical splits it to give roh and br and now next part is attack of br radical on this alkene now it will give you see it can attack either on site a or through b yeah so we're done with karsh effect or what else is left now so we'll get the final product from this yeah i'm going to tell you this it's not even done oh we just got started yeah nice if it attacks through site a you will get br here and a radical here and c c c br here and a radical here now i call this as step 1 and now step 2 includes cleavage of hpr by this alkyl radical now also see that this is more stable because it has more number of hyper conjugations possible whereas this one has only one hyper conjugation structure it has 5 so it is formed and this one is not formed now i call this one as step 2 this takes hydrogen and you will end up getting ch3 ch2 CH2 beer as you can see you have got an anti markovnikov product here now let's look into the data i mean for hi H hcl other halogens for step 1 if you take hf hcl hbr 
It's a. What's your step one? Now. You're gonna have a free radical formation. Yeah. Okay. It's feasible in case of HF, HCl, HPr, but not in case of HI. This is because I has very large size and it cannot overlap effectively with small carbon atoms. So this one is not feasible here. Now. If you look into the step 2 which involves cleavage of HX bond by the alkyl radical. Now it's not feasible in the case of HF, HCl but it's feasible for HBr and HI. So if you take into consideration both step 1 and step 2 you can say that at least for one of the HX other than BR one of the steps is not feasible so crash effect is observed only in case of HPR now okay let's look into the given question all right we're back to the question now yeah okay you are given CBR CL 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 in presence of sunlight remember from our thumb rule help where L is light gives you radical now you need to think which one of CX bond cleaves first either CBR or CCL bond dissociation energy which is the energy to split one mole of bond for CCL is greater than CBR because CL being very smaller than BR can affect overla can overlap effectively with carbon atom. So you're gonna get BR radical and CCL3. Now, do we need to identify which is the nucleophile, or that won't occur in this case? Yeah, because nucleophile has excess electrons, but exactly, and these are free radicals. Free radicals. So there's only a single electron that's available. Yeah, exactly. And you are given the the question you are given the alkene this one C C double bond C. Now first step is feasible in the case of PR as I already told you. It will give you C C C BR and a radical here. Now second one you have C C L3. So you get C, 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 Br, C, C, L3. Now, this is going to be your final product. Now, I want you to try, try this one. What if I give you, uh, say, C, C double bond C plus C, I, C, L3 in presence of H name. Now the answer is exactly the opposite of it. You will get C C C I here and C C L3 here. I want you to figure out the reason for it and if you want a hint, I will give you this. Look into the data I have given you. You will get to know the reason. Alright, now that we are done with the question, should we move on to the next one? Find the products obtained when propene is reacted in the two pathways that follow. First, look into the first part of it, where you got to react propene with Br2 in presence of water. So. It's very simple as structure of bromine Br2 is BrBr. It has uh, electrons lone pair and it also has vacant d orbital. Also, we, we were told that C double bond C is a nucleophile. So, it donates its vacant orbital, its donated electrons to vacant orbital of Br 
and in turn bromine donates its electron to c so you will get h3c ch single bond ch2 br br now come to the next part of it this is a three member ring which is highly unstable so this leaf this ring cleaves away this one also leaves you will get a positive charge here positive charge here and bromine here now in the mixture you have two nucleophiles one is the br minus and one is oh minus which from water you can say now following these two you can have either h3c ch br ch2 br this is one thing and the other one is h3c ch ch2 br and oh on the second carbon it's quite simple now let's move into the second part of it in the second part you are given h3c ch double bond ch2 is reacted with bromine at 127 degrees centigrade now it seems to be very simple because we were already taught that h3c ch ch2 in the presence of bromine it will give you it will undergo electrophilic addition reaction and will give you a vicinal dihalide now i will write down the product for you ch3 ch ch2 br br it is vicinal dibromide seems to be very simple right yeah but like why will iit ask such a question yeah you are correct there is a difference between these two reactions that is if you observe carefully you have high temperature here oh so help yeah correct help here h stands for heat it will give you a free radical intermediate free radical intermediate now see what actually happens at 127 degree centigrade bromine undergoes homolytic cleavage to give bromine radical and bromine and now in the mixture you have propene so that is h3c ch double bond ch2 now you have br here and i'll make it as ch2h now the next part includes abstraction of h radical from bromine radical from alkene by bromine radical that's br so it can take either this hydrogen or this hydrogen or this hydrogen call it as a this one as b and this one as c now see what happens if it goes through this abc individually if it abstracts hydrogen a you going to get h3c ch double bond ch a radical here if it takes hydrogen b you will get h3c c radical here and ch2 if it takes 
uh, hydrogen 3 you're gonna get h2c c double bond c now you need to decide which one of it is more stable now if you look into it carefully you'll observe that this free radical is in resonance with this c double bond c so i'll show you the resonating structure of it it will undergo homolytic cleavage it will give you h2c double bond ch ch2 radical here so since it is in resonance it is more stable okay so this is going to be the majority of the product or will this be 100% of the product yeah this is majority okay. i mean it's around 98% it around com it goes to completion okay all right now let's look into the next part of it that's what happens next you got a radical h2c double bond c and ch2 radical now you have bromine the propagation step involves cleavage of br2 by this radical this is called as allyl radical where you have c double bond c this is called allyl group and this is allyl radical so it will undergo homolytic cleavage and the final product you are going to get is h2c double bond CH single bond CH2 Br. Now you may give you may be given some other things like instead of high temperature you may also be given NBS which is N bromosuccinamide. N bromosuccinamide. I'll tell you the structure of it. It's like this one c double bond o c double bond o and to the nitrogen you have bromine now it's formed from succinic acid i'll give you the structure if you want it is succinic acid now now Let's look into an example to see what NBS is. So let's study the mechanism of NBS in detail now. Yeah. We'll study it with the help of an example. You are given a question like this one. You have treated this with NBS. And you are asked to find out number of products, possible products obtained. So first look into the mechanism of it nbs the structure is as i've already told you c double bond o c double bond o n b r it's very good at producing a free radical at allylic or benzylic positions i'll tell you what these positions are allylic position is C double bond C this one this position is called as allylic position whereas benzylic is pH C this position this is allylic and this is benzylic now see the mechanism for it first this NBS undergoes homolytic cleavage it will give you double bond o n radical and br radical now you have got an alkene here this cycloalkene the next step includes abstraction of h by this br radical so you have three hydrogen basically this one 
this one and two more here sorry h h as discussed in the previous problem allylic radical is highly stable so bromine abstract hydrogen from this per, this carbon and you will get a free radical here now next part is addition of bromine to it it takes another bromine from nbs from nbs and you're going to get this product if you observe this carefully this carbon is chiral that is it is bonded to four different atoms one is bromine and one is hydrogen one is double bonded carbon and one is single bonded carbon so also since it's a free radical it is planar that is it's planar and bromine can attack either from above or from below so there are two enantiomeric enantiomers possible for this that is two products now if you are given a multiple choice question and you are asked this question if you write the answer as to you going to be wrong because in the question they were asked find the number of possible products and if you observe the intermediate this one it's in resonance with c double bond c and one of the possible resonating structure is when this undergoes homolytic cleavage you will get a double bond here and a radical here now the same thing happens this radical takes bromine from nbs and finally you're going to get this one yeah bromine here also see that there are no chiral carbons here all these carbons are chiral and also there is no possibility for geometrical isomerism since this is in the ring it cannot rotate so we have only one product possible here so the total number of possible products obtained are 2 plus 1 which is equal to 3 okay so students as we said you have to be very careful about drawing out all the structures and being able to understand all the ones that nbs is going to react with yes it would have been very easy to make a mistake and just put the number as 2 yeah and which is why as we said be careful about the resonating structures that are formed and adequately solve the problem based on that so let's move on to the next question